I really want to bring horror back to this channel. I want these videos to be so scary that whenever you click on one of them, you'll have a hard time staying through the entire video without pausing every now and then because you get too scared. Which is fine. It happens to the best of us. I pause videos all the time. So I was looking on the internet, seeing if I could find any creepy videos to react to. And I found this channel called Buddy Films. Make sure you guys check them out down below in the description. They've been posting a series of videos that take place in a national park. The first one is called The Most Dangerous National Park in the USA, 1975 Found Footage Tape, Woodlands National Park. I'm intrigued. I'm interested and you're gonna smash that like button. Let's see what this is all about. So this is a video from 1975 about the Woodlands National Hello, Park. I'm Park Ranger Steve and I'm Park hey there. Ranger Alex and welcome to Woodlands National Park. What's up y'all? Okay, somebody took the tape out of the VHS player. Let's take a closer look to these two guys. So this right here is Alex and this is Steve. They're both park rangers. This kind of looks like some kind of PSA video. Uh, but it's glitching all over the place. So who knows what's about to happen. Woodlands National Park, located in the beautiful state of... They cut it off right before they said which state it is in too. So it's going to be hard to find this park. I wonder if they did that for a reason. Oh, we got a brochure. Can we open this? Oh, it's a video. <laughs> I forgot it's not a video game. My bad. Established in 1912. Woodlands National Park was designated as a national monument in 1912 and made an official national park in 1939. The park contains many anomalous creatures, plants and entities. And today we're going to be talking about informational videos that are only what? available at our visitor centers. These videos will include stuff about the park, locations, and crazy animals that will give you nightmares. What? What the? Okay, this is weird. So the park rangers know there's like creepy entities. Is that supposed to be normal? Is it like common knowledge? And we also saw some something creepy right here. Like just for a flash. What the flip is this? Look, this only shows up for literally one frame. If you blink, you'll miss it. What is this? Is this supposed to be a creature? Is this like an arm, a leg? It can be a face. So I don't see any eyes. This is creepy. What do you guys think this is? Now we have this thing. This actually looks like... This actually kind of looks like a face. Because this looks like a large black eye. And then these things right here, you can barely make them out. But kind of look like teeth. Which would make me think this is like a face. A very creepy looking face. So the park ranger said there's like... Scary creatures. He's standing right there. What? I didn't see anybody standing there. Wait, let's take a close look. Let's zoom in even. Do y'all see anything? I mean, I kind of... Yo, editor, uh, turn the brightness up. Is there like something standing right here? Or am I tripping? I have no idea, but uh, it says that he's standing right there, which is also kind of weird. What was, what was that frame? Is that just the same frame zoomed in? I can't make anything out, guys. This quality is way too bad. It's probably an old VHS tape. I mean, 1975. These videos can be located at our visitor centers at the designated viewing stations. All you have to do if you want to learn about a subject is press the designated button and these videos will play. These videos cover topics mm -hmm. such as walkers, weather, trail locations, visitors locations, national park history, yeah. and more. Wait, was the first thing he said walkers? Aren't walkers like, I don't know, creatures? These videos cover topics such as walkers, weather. Oh yeah, he definitely said walkers. Oh nah, there's some some wild going on here. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you found this video informational and we hope you also find further videos informational. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to a park ranger and they will help you the best they can. We hope you enjoy your stay and have a great time at Woodlands, Woodlands National, National Park. Park. I, I don't think I'm going to have a good stay at Women's National Park. If I can be real honest with you. But they did say we could find more videos like this in the visitor center. I can already see one. This one's called Park Ranger Admits to the Existence of Wendigos. Yo, I kind of recognize this thing. Was this not the thing in the freeze frame? No, I can kind of see what it is. Is this a Wendigo? This is like the nose and this is the mouth. And then this is where the eye is supposed to be. This is creepy. Let's see what this is all about. So this is from the same year, 1975. And this is part of the same visitor video series that they're doing in this national park. Same ranger as well. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Adam. with Woodlands National Park. Oh, Steve, park. my bad. And today I'm going to be talking about Wendigos. Wendigo what? Now what is a Wendigo? 
I already know what a Wendigo is. Let me say that before um, Steve over here, or whatever his name is, tells y'all. A Wendigo? I just blanked out. It's a creature of Native American folklore that... Oh, 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 oh. It's a cannibal. The myth goes like this. When a human eats human flesh, they turn into a Wendigo. But where they go? I don't know. I just know when they go. <laughs> Take it away, Mark. Well, a Wendigo is actually a Native American legend, which until recently we thought it was a legend. Due to some mishaps at the park. It's not a legend. There is no legs here. You can see the drag marks about here. We now have a knowledge what? that Wendigos are real. Now, with this being said, if you need more information about the Wendigo, please feel free to pick up a pamphlet at one of our many visitor centers around the park. I need one of those pamphlets. What the flip do they have written in there? Now, what should you do if you encounter one on many on one of our many prestigious trails? Well, the first thing you should do is never run. They love it when you run. So when you see a wet... Oh, a cameraman, did you not listen to Mark? He said never run. So, you can't run. So what should you do? Well, the reason we say don't run is because actually a Wendigo can run up to 45 miles per hour. And this Jeez. is... 45 miles per hour? That's fast. Are they going to show what it looks like? Because we've seen part of its face in the thumbnail. But I want to see what a body looks like. Oh, we're going to see what's inside of the park brochure. Open it up, baby. Wendigos. First discovered by the Native Americans in the northern regions of the United States, the Wendigo is a flesh-eating monster, has been observed running up to 45 miles per hour. To successfully kill a Wendigo, the heart must be removed. The best course of action is to slowly back away. So I said uh, a human that eats human flesh turns into a Wendigo. That's just one version of the legend that I've read before, but I don't think it's necessarily part of every, you know, story about wendigos because in this case they don't mention that it's a human that ate human flesh they just say a wendigo is a creature we have no idea where it came from we do know it's gonna run fast as heck boy make sure you watch your footing so you don't step on any loose debris once you've reached a safe distance please speed up and reach one of your local visitor centers or mm -hmm. one of your local officers from yeah. then please let them know the location and time of your sighting so we can close the area off and prevent any personal casualties so they are not going to try to kill the wendigo remember the brochure said you can actually kill one by stabbing stab it bada binging it through the heart uh i don't think they get paid enough to do that oh hey hey john john what is that oh this isn't part of the video I john we gotta go john we gotta go john we gotta go john we gotta go Ooh, looks like a Wendigo actually showed up. Wait, they didn't cut this out of the video? Hey, yo, did the Wendigo just take a bite out of John? Oh, yeah, it did. A hundred percent. Oh, we got to take a close look at this. So now we know that this is supposed to be the Wendigo's nose, which means, oh, we could even see its eye. This is its eye. This is the nose, and then like the mouth is like all the way under, below here, below the frame. So we know what its face kind of looks like. We have no idea what the body looks like. We just know it can run really fast. Ooh, they got more videos. Wait, so I don't know if that park ranger survived. In this video, the thumbnail has the other park ranger. And this video is called 45 foot tall cryptid in the Woodlands National Park. Also 1975. A lot of crazy stuff happened in 1975. These guys can't catch a break. Hold on though. 45 foot tall cryptid? So this is something other than a... Where'd it go? 45... Well, how much is that in meters? It's like... Hi, big. I'm Park Ranger Alex here. What up, Alex? National Park. And before we get started with today's PSA, here are some announcements for the park this coming week. Dead Man's Trail is closed until further notice. Why is it called Dead Man's Trail? <laughs> Why? Is that the trail where uh, the park ranger died? Yeah, that's again where you That all park members please respect the privacy of the victim. Whoa, he said victim? So somebody really did die there? Alex here at Woodlands National Park. And before we get started with today's PSA, here are some announcements for the park this coming week. Dead Man's Trail is closed until further notice. We ask that all park members please respect the privacy of the victim. Somebody really did die there, so it might have something to do with the previous video. 
the visitor center on the south side is also now open. Hold on though. Imagine this. You visit this national park, the Woodlands National Park. You go to the visitor center. There is a brochure that says, hey, beware of cryptids and entities. If you do see one, uh, make sure you don't run. Because if you do, it can run 45 miles per hour and it will eat you. Oh, by the way, there's also 45 foot tall cryptids in this forest. Who in their right minds would not only become a member of this park, but also hike in there? Please stop by we, as we have many activities for the family and the children. Today's PSA is in regards to the increased reports of walker activity throughout the park. And we as a park staff wish to inform the public about what walkers are and how mm -hmm. to be safe against them. There's a second time they mentioned walkers. They mentioned them in like the first or second video. And I have no idea what they mean by that. Walkers could be anything. Could be zombies, the walking dead, huh? Could also just be uh, old hikers, which Ooh. is also pretty creepy. Walkers are, by all accounts, unique to the park and that they are never found anywhere else in the world. Hmm? Walkers until recently were believed to be completely invisible and possibly spectral. Invisible, spectral, so they're pretty much like ghosts. But due to thermal technology, we have been able to visualize walkers and mm -hmm. now are able to report on how they actually look. Okay, sometimes you gotta ask yourself uh, not how you should do something, but you should ask yourself why you should do something. Why exactly do we want to see these terrifying, disturbing, nightmare-inducing walkers? They're invisible. I feel like we should be glad that they are so we don't have to witness them but now we go out of our way figure out how we can actually see these walkers get out of here bro i don't want to see that walkers are for all intents and purposes completely invisible to the naked eye as their skin is such a dark black color it absorbs all spectrums of visible light oh so it's not a ghost that is so crazy y'all realize what he just said here i was assuming since they were invisible they're ghosts but he just gave a very scientific explanation that somehow makes it creepier than if they were ghosts he's saying these creatures their skin or just the color of their skin or whatever is so 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 dark they're literally consuming all of the light or something like that which is why technically they're not invisible but we just can't perceive them or, or something, something like that. that i don't know i can't really explain it i know exactly what he means though and for some reason that makes it scarier than if it was just some paranormal explanation usually it's the exact, exact opposite. opposite whenever there's like a horror movie and they try to explain why a monster exists and they give it like a grounded in reality explanation like oh, i'm like man cut that crap off man i don't want to hear that i want some mystery but in this case it's actually a creepy explanation What the heck? Yo, whoa, whoa. Oh, no flipping way. This is the same clip as before. But when we saw this clip before, we didn't have this information. When they said he's standing right there, you're talking about a walker. We just literally can't see the walker. It's invisible to our eyes. That's, That's so creepy. creepy. That is actually, whoa. I wonder if they're going to turn on like the, the, the infrared camera now. Because there's ways for us to see it. It can only be seen by a thermal technology. And with this, we've been able to conclude they are anywhere between 12 to 45 feet tall with long legs and short torsos. Long legs and short torsos? What? I'm trying to imagine that. So do they walk on like two legs? Okay, we're going to the park brochure again. Uh, tell me why anybody would go here, please. They're not even trying to hide the fact that it, there's like creatures in here. They're so open about it. Oh, that's a lot of text. Walkers are mysterious creatures that are completely invisible to the naked eye at night due to their incredibly dark skin that absorbs all visible light. We currently have no explanation for where they come from. They are estimated to be anywhere from 12 to 45 feet in height. Dude, I gotta see how much that is in meters. 30 meters. That is... Pretty big! Walkers are capable of producing high levels of radio waves from their bodies. This will cause any radio in the immediate area to produce static. This is theorized to be some sort of language to the walkers, but efforts to decipher the signals have been unsuccessful. So technically, if you can't see the walkers, but you still want to know whenever there's one close by, you need a radio with you. And whenever the radio makes a static noise, you know you gotta get the heck out of here. But are the walkers, like, violent? Because if so, how do we escape? While the walkers are incredibly dangerous creatures, there are measures you can take to ensure your safety and still have an enjoyable time here at Woodlands National Park. How, how, how can anyone have an enjoyable time here? Wouldn't you be stressed out of your butt by being in this park? Firstly, 
We urge you not to leave the designated camping area. The designated camping area is walled off, well lit, and well protected against all outside threats at the park. Uh -huh. We urge you not to leave, as it is your safest place to be. I can name about 30 places that are safer than this park, y'all. And number 29... Is the bottom of the ocean without any scuba gear. That's probably safer than being in this park. Secondly, we urge you not to let your campfire die out, even late at night. Keeping your campfire stocked is your last line of defense against any threats that may want to hurt you. Thirdly, mm -hmm. if you have any FM radio or AM radio or any kind of walkie-talkie, we urge you that if you hear static late at night, hey bro, I hear somebody words, walking. Ranger, Ranger. If you don't, do not hear a designated ranger with a badge number respond to you, please ignore as it is a walker. We do not understand how exactly this is possible, but we can confirm it is indeed a walker. So they use radio to like lure you as well? What's this? Oh, uh, bro, you better keep that campfire open now. On, let's turn on. You be keep it lit. You better keep it lit, bro. Why did that not look like uh, VHS footage, though? That looked like actually pretty modern. If you have any questions, feel free to ask a ranger or pick up a brochure in the visitor center. That's all for today, folks. Happy camping here at Woodlands National Park. Well, he actually survived. They didn't run into any walkers, unlike the last guy. Last guy was telling us about Wendigos, and then the Wendigo was like, I will go now. <laughs> oh, man, I was waiting for that joke. Hold up. What the flip is this next video? Private military group hunts down Wendigo. Found footage state Woodlands National Park. Hold on. They hunted this Wendigo down? I was about to ask that. Why doesn't the government do something about these creatures? Why is this park even open? If this was, like, happening right now, they would shut this place down. Make it a government facility or something. But let's see if this private military group has what it takes. So it's not even a government military group. It's a private military group. So somebody hired them. Might be the park themselves. The Dyer Corporation. Bringing you a better tomorrow. Wait, this is not a PSA? Warning. This program is considered highly classified. Any person or persons viewing this film without gamma level security clearance are subject to immediate termination of employment and benefits without warning from the Dyer Corporation. Viewer discretion is advised. So this is not something that the park rangers or like the park people made. This is by the Dyer Corporation. I wonder if this is the military group's name or if this is like some other corporation or like foundation. SCP-ish. That hired a military group. Well, let's see what this is all about. They said viewer discretion is advised. On June 3rd, 1975, the Dyer Corporation received a call from Woodlands National Park. Regarding the recent death of one of their production staff, John Stewart. Footage recovered from the scene revealed that the cause of death was an encounter with a Wendigo. Within 15 hours of John's death, Diacorp's private military group, Task Force Delta, arrived on the scene. They were tasked with tracking down the creature and exterminating it. So they waited until somebody actually got killed by a creature, track it down and take it down. At least this answers the question. It was the park itself that hired this uh, military. The team consisted of an expert tracker, two weapon specialists, and a cameraman to document the entire mission. So we're probably going to be looking at the footage of this mission right now. Ooh, we even got a map and stuff. This right here is where John died. Here's where the body was found by park rangers. But wait, is this not, was John not in that video where they got attacked by a one ago? They followed the creature's trail to the riverbank where they found a shallow place to cross. Right there. Oh, so they figured out where the Wendigo lives. Maybe they had to figure that out first before they could actually hire somebody to take down the Wendigo. Uh, I'm gonna keep it real, y'all. This private military corporation. They look kind of cheap. They look kind of cheap. I know if they got what it takes. Wait, did they find the lair? No, this is the, um, the water that they're crossing. Okay, buddy. Calm down. Oh, we... You don't want to see that? Oh, 
What the? Hey, man, when I called y'all chief, I didn't mean it. <laughs> they sent in a jet to bomb me. Y'all saw? Y'all heard that, right? It's crazy. I actually got scared for a second. Nah, this this military um, a unit actually looks very good. And I think they got what it takes to take down this Wendigo. At least they're smart. Normally, whenever there's videos like this and I react to them, the one thing I always notice is that these idiots go out at night. They went out during the daytime. At the halfway point, the men set up camp for the night. Never mind, I take it back. The mission resumed early the next morning. Okay, but well, they couldn't help it though, because it just takes that long to actually reach the Wendigo's lair. So they had to set up a camp, spend the night, and then they continued when the sun was up again. So they're still doing pretty good. So the, the national park is that big, they actually can't cross it in one day. An after all campsite was discovered approximately 63 miles from... Bro, I can't read that fast! 63 miles from Dead Man's Trail on the second day. So somebody discovered a campsite that wasn't on the trail. But the PSA said you should never ever do this. Because you could run into walkers. But this begs the question, whose camp was it and what happened to him? Ooh, what's up with these guys? Well, hey, why are y'all stressed? <laughs> why are y'all acting so nervous all of a sudden? Did y'all see something? I think they might be getting close to the Wendigo. But they got their, their weapons aimed up and everything. Yup, there's the camp. Um, who the heck camps here? Who in their right mind would ever camp here like this? It's not like they were hiding these creatures. They were so open about their being creatures. They even gave you guys warnings on how you should escape. Honestly, if you still go camping here, I might almost say that um, you don't you you don't necessarily deserve it, and you might have not been asking for it, but you could have known better. I'm not victim blaming here. Document everything. Why did he sound Russian? Ooh, 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 that that, that. rookie mistake, you know. Some people just don't realize uh, the blood. If, if you got blood in your body, uh, you should try to ensure the blood stays in your body. Because uh, it shouldn't be on the trees, that's for sure. It should be in your body. Uh, so uh, try, try, try to try not to lose any blood, okay? Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. Hey, I, I think somebody could use that blood. Um, ooh. Even got the handprint, that's a classic. Two handprints! Masterpiece. So we think the Wendigo did this. Or like, we're pretty sure the Wendigo did this. It's warm. It's warm? <laughs> the Wendigo's nearby. Hold on, did y'all not give the cameraman a weapon? He's literally just there to film your vlog. Uh oh. Yo, static. Static in the camera. Could that be walker activity? Delta team held their position till nightfall. Oh, why would you do that? The walkers come out at night. Now you got a Wendigo and you got walkers to take care of. And they didn't tell us if walkers could be killed. As a matter of fact, they didn't really tell us anything about walkers at all. Man, y'all are definitely not getting paid enough to do this. Ooh. Check it out. Are you clear? What is that? I, th I think we're clear. Are you sure you're clear? Wait. Ah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, stay here. You, with me. Go, go. They should have sent an entire army in here, guys. They, they sent in three guys and a cameraman. <laughs> and they left the cameraman by himself. The one to go, bro. We're going into the tent. Okay, he's he's very scared and stressed. So obviously the cameraman isn't gonna be making the right choices. But why would you go into the tent? Didn't you see there was blood in the other tent? It's not like the tent's gonna stop the one to go from ripping you open, bro. As a matter of fact, the tent's already been ripped open. 
It's not even a, it's not even an unripped ten. Not. Hold on. They shot the Wendigo. But they got it. They got it. They got it. They got to shoot it through the heart, right? They got to do something with the heart. The, the, the a couple of videos ago, they explained how to kill a Wendigo, and you definitely had to get it through the heart. They're still chasing it, so they still have a chance to actually take down the heart. Wait, I only see one one soldier. Did the other two die? I guess we'll never know. The Dire Corporation, bringing you a better tomorrow. Is that it? Looks like that's it. So that was footage from a military group that probably failed to kill the Wendigo. You can see right here, they actually held a memorial service for the man eaten by the Wendigo. It looks like both park rangers are actually there. I thought this one died, but I guess it was just his cameraman who got eaten. Woodlands National Park. Okay, so this is the moment John died. His name was John. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. Dude, the John, park ranger go. was literally saying in this video, don't run when you see a Wendigo. And what do they do in the video when they see a Wendigo? They start running. Ooh, that sounded painful. But very tasty for the Wendigo. So they're gonna be hosting a memorial for John. Smash like if you uh, want to pay your respects. What the heck is this? It's a phone call. They said not to run. I guess now we know how the park ranger survived. So you can't kill the Wendigo by just shooting it, but you can scare it out. That's Hi everybody, good to know. welcome to Woodlands National Park. And here are some updates for the park this upcoming week. Firstly, we would like to thank everyone who came out to our dear friend John Stewart's memorial service yesterday. It was, um, it really was a beautiful thing seeing all of the, uh, all the rangers, all the park goers, all the staff there, it, it, it was, it really was beautiful to to honor our dear friend who worked here for over 20 years as our wildlife photographer. Kind of sad. We would like to ask that you keep his wife and kids in your prayers and thoughts this upcoming. Time's going to be really hard for them. So, uh, here's the thing though. Y'all are still in the park where he got eaten by a Wendigo. At what point are you going to be like... I'm gonna get a no, job at right like now. somewhere else. I'm tired. I'm depressed. I'm miserable. I'm exhausted. It's been one thing after another. I just don't want to do this right now. I just want a break. How much are these people getting paid? I break too, man, but we gotta get this video out. You got the memo just as well as I did. The death quota is already too high. We're not even. We're the not death even quota? The year yet. If they found out our wildlife photographer got killed by one of these things. Oh my gosh, they'd have a field day with us. Who? They shut the park down is what would happen. I know. That, w w that a bad thing? Shut this place down. Why do you want to keep it open? Yeah, what do you need? 
Wait, wait, hold on. That's so weird. Their death quota is apparently too high, so... Too many people have already died. Then this guy over here is like, oh, they'll have a field day with us if they find out. Like, they'll probably close the park down. So? Explain to me how that's a negative thing. John's wife is asking questions. Wait, but they're so open about what's in the park. They they have brochures with the creatures. They have PSAs about the creatures. So what kind of questions could the wife have? Like, did they lie about how John got killed? I'm intrigued. I have questions. Just like John's wife. Only difference is my husband isn't dead. Because I don't have one. Ma'am, for the last time, I strongly urge you to sign the agreement and take the money. Why? Hmm. What is it that I'm not supposed to talk about? For God's sakes, my husband worked as a cameraman for a national park. It sounds like you're trying to hide something. This is Stuart. Hiding? This is standard protocol when something like this happens. None of you care what actually happened to John. So I guess this is the park's lawyer or something. He's trying to get her to sign an agreement so she doesn't talk about what happened. But what does she really know? Like, does she know he was killed by a Wendigo? Does she even know about Wendigos? Because she has to know, right? Because it's in all the brochures, I think. Stop pretending like you care. <sighs> you know, he told me what happens here. What really happens here. What happens? I know he didn't die from a bear attack. He was a wildlife cameraman for over 20 years. Oh, wait. So they told her he got attacked by a bear? But I'm so confused. Why would they lie about that? Why would they be so open about the creatures and make videos about the creatures so visitors know how to be safe? And then they lie to the wife about him being killed by a bear? Oh, I'm so confused. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe the videos aren't for the public and maybe the brochures aren't for the public either. What? It's way too experienced for that. I think one of those things one of those monsters got him so she knows know about the monsters about. he told me about how the park lies to the public by downplaying how dangerous the monsters really are he told me about how the park covers up how many people actually die as a way to keep this whole operation afloat i strongly recommend that you stop talking okay i take that back so the public knows about the monsters but what the park is doing is they're making the monsters seem way less dangerous than they actually are which makes sense they're explaining the, these monsters like it's regular wildlife like they're explaining a bear but these are dangerous dangerous animals well monsters not even animals for your own good nancy stop talking right now and you get the hell out i was just i don't care i said get the hell out right now and don't say a word of this to anyone, or have you working as a public defender the rest of your measly career. What? Steve, what is going on? Please tell me what's going on. Nancy, you need to sign this NDA right now. What? Steve, Why? please tell me what happened to John. Please, Nancy, you can't be talking about this right now. I don't know who's listening. Who? Who is listening? Shh. Who's listening? Okay, so she signed the agreement. Read don't speak. Wait, he wrote something. Oh. oh, God, really? Oh, he's not gonna tell us what he wrote down? So she's not signing the agreement yet. They... They wouldn't. John worked for them for so long. Why me? Nancy, listen to me. You haven't said too much yet. If you sign the agreement now, you can walk away from this. I'm sorry what happened to John, but that's over and done with now. These people... What people? I've seen what they'll do. The people who know too much. You need to do this, Nancy. Do it it almost makes they it sound like they killed John on purpose or something. Lost their dad. They're gonna need their mom now. <sighs> okay. I'll sign it. Now the lawyer's gonna write you a check. Take the money and go to the bank immediately. And cash it out. Get the kids and get as far away from here as you possibly can. And don't you ever say a word about what he told you or what happened here today. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand. If you need anything, Nancy, you call me. So these park rangers know more than they let on. There's something going on and the park, there's a conspiracy. There's a conspiracy with the park and there's some kind of foundation running everything. And they're hiding something in this park. So in this next video, we're actually going back in time. It takes place in the 1850s. It says miners were eaten alive by these creatures. So how long have these creatures been here in this park?
1850 at least, but the park wasn't established until 1912. Hi everyone, I'm Park Ranger Steve with Woodlands National Park, and today I'm going to be talking about a creature that can only be found here at Woodlands National Park. A different creature? Oh, hi guys. I'm out here panning for gold, just like the miners in the 1850s used to do in this natural river. What they would actually do is take shelter in these natural forming caves, mm -hmm. but little did they know that there were hellish creatures awaiting deep inside those caverns. Why are you smiling these when you say that? hellish creatures are called cave critters. Cave critters are tall, gray, humanoid-like creatures with six appendages that range anywhere between 10 to 12 feet. These creatures also have superhuman strength, which gives them the ability to hold on and scale rocks. Hey, buddy, I'm... I'm not sure if you learned from the Wendigo incident where your buddy died, but you're talking about these creatures that live in these mines and you got your back turned to the mine. Shouldn't you like turn around? Very fast. The creatures also tend not to leave the cave. See, I told you. Go now. Now. Go. I told you. Couldn't be me. That would never happen to me. I would I would never be in that situation. Ever. Ever. What's this? Ooh, wait, we can see it. The best photograph we have on file, taken by John Stewart in 1957. So this right here is a cave dweller. Is this the only cave dweller we can see? Because it kind of looks like there's some kind of cave dweller over here too. They said he had like six appendices. That's like legs and arms, right? But I only see one, two, three, four. But this is the best picture we have. Since precautions have been taken, we have not had a fatality due to cave critters since 1962. That's pretty good. Cave critters actually don't reproduce like normal animals. What they actually do is they have a virus that lives in their saliva. Mm -hmm. And they infect people through biting. Now, once you have the virus, we call this a 45-45-10 rule. Meaning you have a 45% chance of dying from the disease, a 45% chance of turning completely into a cave critter, and a 10% chance of having absolutely no side effects. We what? don't fully understand how this works. Within the first two weeks, the victim may experience rabies-like symptoms. Also, within the later month, they experience more symptoms, including but not limited to changes in skin color, superhuman strength, and the urge to return to the cave at all times. Hold on, though. This is crazy. How are they saying this like it is in the wild what they just said? So a cave dweller or whatever they, uh, they called it, a cave critter, it's not just a regular monster. A cave dweller is a human that's been bitten by one of these cave critters and then they turned into one so they're they're literally they used to be humans i don't know why that's freaking me out right now and even the symptoms that they said you have like a 10 percent chance of nothing happening to you 45 percent chance of dying 45 percent chance of turning into a cave critter and when you turn into a cave critter you get these rabies like symptoms and then the creepiest part is that the cave starts calling for you. You feel this huge urge to return to the cave. I don't know why that's so creepy. Now we have the Dire Corporation. Are they going to go into the mine? Because I, I kind of want to see what's in there. This program is considered highly classified. Any person, blah, 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 blah. Viewer discretion is advised. So did they get hired by the park? Yeah? Okay. I see what's going on. This guy must have been bitten by a cave quitter. Uh, quit, quitter. Quit, quit. Oh, well, he just got shot. I guess they found a cure. What's going on now? Bark brochure. Oh, man, I haven't seen this in a while. Cave critters. First discovered by miners during the gold rush. Cave, crit cave, <laughs> ca <laughs> cave critters are pale humanoid like creatures with six appendages. They have long fingers and claws that enable them to climb and scale rocks effortlessly. Oh, they didn't mention that. That's pretty sick. If bitten by a cave critter. So, yeah, you have a 45% chance of dying, 45% chance of turning into a cave critter, and a 10% chance of surviving without any side effects. I understand why that organization wants to experiment on people that got bitten. Because if they can figure out a way to get the superhuman strength without the other side effects, they could probably use that for like their soldiers and stuff. We're not sure of their origin. Attempts to research them has proved fatal. So we know all these cave critters used to be humans. Because you turn into one when one bites you. Like there's a 45% um, chance. Which is pretty high when you think about it. But how did the first ever cave critter uh become a cave critter like did he get bitten by a different kind of monster or is it something else entirely i guess we'll never know because research on them has proven fatal the reason for this powerful 
urge to be drawn back to the cave is due to intense pheromones given off by the larger group of cave critters. Once the victim has reached the cave, it will be ushered in and protected by the larger group of cave critters until the hmm. full transformation, it takes around six months, will be fully completed. How did they notice? So, you may be wondering, what should you do to stay safe against these cave critters? Don't now, go luckily, here? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that. Because here at Woodlands National Park, safety is their number one priority. That's why we took the liberty of using caution tape to block off the cave. Is that going to stop a cave critter now? These guys are not serious. <laughs> now... Under the very rare circumstance that you encounter someone with rabies-like symptoms approaching the cave, under no circumstances should you try and stop them, as they will cause bodily harm to get to the cave. Now, what you should do is get to your local visitor center or contact a park ranger immediately. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask a park ranger or pick up a brochure at the visitor center. We hope you enjoy your visit and that you have a great time at Woodlands National Park. All right, buddy. Thanks. I'll, I'll have an amazing time trying not to get bitten by cave critters, wendigos, or walkers. Uh oh, uh -oh. the cave critter disease outbreak of 1975. Ooh, I guess those uh, cave critters didn't care about the warning tape, huh? So this is footage from the Yadaya Corporation again. I'm pretty sure they were trying to do research on the cave critters. We saw that in the previous tape. Another warning, viewer discretion is advised. Alright, uh, is this, is this tape blank? October 7th of 1975, Todd Harrison's curiosity has him ventured too close to the cave where he was bitten by a cave critter. He hurriedly left, covering his wound, wounds, avoiding any suspicion from the rangers. Todd was unaware of how serious his injury was as he felt fine on his way back to New York. Yeah, wait, what happens if you get bitten and then you go back home? The following week, he started feeling bad and went to a local deer medical facility. After hearing he visited the park, the symptoms he had were more than alarming. His blood was drawn and sent to the labs for testing. It was discovered that he was in stage 1 of the cave critter disease. CCD for short. <laughs> I just made that up. Head park ranger Steve was notified immediately by the doctors. Wait, imagine you get bitten and you get the cave critter disease, but you're like, in Europe. How are you going to get back to the cave? Like, is it specifically that cave where the cave critters are? Or is it like caves all over the world? Hello, this is James with Dire Tech Medical. My security clearance code is Alpha 586925. So that's the what doctor? Okay. So the park rangers have pretty high clearance, it seems. All right, what can I do for you? I need to confirm some information. Could you verify a couple of things for me? Yeah, I'll do my best. I need you to tell me if a gentleman by the name of Todd Harrison was in your park last week. Give me one second and let me check it. Uh oh. He definitely was. But he's in New York right now. He didn't even try to hide it. <laughs> they just never checked for bites. Why was he so shocked that they didn't figure out he was bitten? All right, so they're sending a team out there to capture him, I guess. So all of this is under the radar. They're doing this in complete secrecy. The day that James reached out to Steve, five days had passed since the blood work had been sent off and confirmed with Direct Tech Labs. A team was sent out same day to Todd Harrison's house. All right, so they're out to get Todd. But remember, he's in stage one, so he already has like 
superhuman strength, most probably. Unless he's dead. Alright, that's his house. Upon arrival, the team concluded that Todd had been living out of the closet in the basement. So he's trying to get in a dark area. They found towels over all the windows, blocking any light from coming through. As he grew more sensitive to light, as his condition worsened. A cameraman was then sent in to record the findings. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop sacrificing these cameramen. Just stick a GoPro on the soldiers. I feel like that would be way safer for everybody involved. Tell me the cameraman has a weapon at least. It doesn't seem like it. Also, those towels are barely covering anything. So he was living in his basement, they said. Oh, the basement looks pretty dark. I guess this is what happens if you're like in Europe while getting a cave for the disease. You just try to find a dark spot anywhere. Even if it's like a basement like this. And maybe you just travel around during the night time. That would make sense. But in most cities, they got like the street land. So it's never actually dark. Ugh. Hey, yo, somebody clean that up. Oh my God, flashing lights. <laughs> The blood on the sink is believed to be one of the side effects from the disease. As seen from previous subjects, symptoms could be bleeding that occurs from the eyes and nose. These symptoms were documented from a subject in 1961. Ew. Bleeding out of your eyes? So you've seen okay, this is the basement. Why is there a security camera in his basement though? Ugh. What the heck? Wait. So you can... What the flip, bro? Don't do that. Don't zoom in like that without telling me. The team continued to search the surrounding area but came up empty-handed. So a cave critter is pretty easy to kill. Approximately six months later, two security guards heard strange noises coming from an abandoned hospital on the hill. One went to investigate and was attacked. The second guard claimed to have seen his friend get taken by a tall gray, six-limbed creature. Dire Corp caught wind of these events and immediately sent a team. Wait, but where was this hospital? Was this near Todd's place? Ten men arrived heavily armed, including a cameraman for documentation. <laughs> Please invest in some... Oh, hold on though. It's 1975. They didn't have GoPros back then. Well, they did have GoPros, but they were about <laughs> this big. Out of the ten men, only three survived during this takedown. Two of which bitten and infected. So I'm guessing Todd infected a bunch of people. The cameraman was killed and his footage destroyed. Except for a few still frames that the team was able to save. Do y'all see anything? Oh, whoa, no, stop it, bro. Okay, am I tripping or is there a face right here? I think I might be tripping. Editor enhance. Is that a face? Maybe, maybe not. So they don't have the video. They just have a couple of frames. I don't really see anything. Is this something down here? I'm not seeing anything, y'all. Editor, please enhance. What? Huh? What am I supposed to see? Is that a face? Hold on. I think, I think this time I might have actually seen something. Looks like this is the neck. These are the ears. This is the head. Okay, this is definitely something. Wait, so did they end up killing this thing? The two infected survivors were taken into containment to be studied. The cave critter body was removed and the cover-up process began. So the Dyer Corporation is kind of like an SCP foundation, it seems like. And the park rangers or all the employees in the park, they're kind of part of this foundation. They're working together. They're open about the monsters existing, but they're downplaying how dangerous they are, I guess. Strange. Like, I, I just want to understand why they want to keep this park open in the first place. Are they doing something behind the scenes? Maybe research? Maybe there's something even worse than the monsters that they do talk about? I don't know, but what I do know is that they somehow got footage of a 45 feet tall walker. We haven't seen what these walkers look like because they're mostly invisible. And this is also footage from 1976. So this is the newest footage that we have. Let's see how this walker eats the campers. Hi everybody, welcome to Woodlands National Park. I'm Park Ranger Steve, What's and up, today Steve? we'll be talking about the importance of only staying at designated campsites. Okay. This is very... Uh -huh. Give this a second. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, Alex, what's up? 
I'm down at Ranger Station 4. I got a camper who just came up here covered in blood, and he said he and his three friends were attacked by what sounds like a walker. Uh, uh -oh. Last night, but he just made it up here. He's covered in blood. You need to get down here ASAP. All right, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. All right, we got to go. We got to go. So once again, there's a buddy with three buddies, and they decided to go out camping in Woodlands National Park. Knowing that there's monsters, knowing there's Wendigos, knowing there's walkers that you can't see. Who in their right mind would do this? Like, I can almost understand because there's also people that go out camping in national parks knowing that there's like bears and stuff. So maybe people would actually do this. But still, I know, bro. Like, do something else with your life. Like, you just, I know. Go camping in your backyard. Is this general vicinity? Is this general vicinity? All right, let's yes. I don't think it's much farther. So they're gonna try to find this walker, I guess? Says he... Hold on. What's that? Oh, that's the park ranger. My bad. I thought it was a walker hey, right uh, there. Hey, but... Alex, you hear that? Hear what? Wait. I yeah. do hear something. Is that? That's music. We yeah. do have a new camera, man. See how long he'll survive. I see it. Yep, I got it. So they found music. I guess the campers dropped uh, well, a radio. Uh, like Here's where your music coming from. Titchenau what is Rangers. that? We found the campsite. About a mile off trail this way. It's a radio, yeah. Okay, well, there's two people. Where, where did the tech go? You're not gonna believe this. Guy gets to the ranger station. I mean, it's it, he's in bad, bad shape. Says the walker picked him up while he was in the tent and lobs him across the forest. He says he lands in a tree about 30 feet up. Falls, and I guess yeah. that's how he snapped his leg. That's insane. Oh, that's insane. He was literally just sleeping in his tent, and then this walker literally yeah. yeeted him across the forest. Hey. Oh my god. So how the flip are they gonna find this walker? Oh my god, Alex called us in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Attention all rangers. Uh, I think you should put that in ice just so they can reach that. Disposal units. Do a final sweep of the trail as well. We don't need anybody stumbling across the You should probably take that, that be before close. the Wendigo finds it, because the Wendigo will eat it. Alright, let's try this up and find any other remains that might be around here. Oh, they're, they're not gonna put it on ice? Oh they my god, care? Alex! Jesus Christ, it ripped him to shreds! Just Why are they so shocked? Them. They know oh what these god. monsters do! They better get here quick, they need to clean this up, this is bad! You know, if you guys just close down the park, you wouldn't have to clean anything up. As a matter of fact, people would Steve? stop dying! Yeah. Found the tent. Also, this raises a question. What if a walker and a cave critter and a wendigo run into each other, seeing as they live in the same forest? Are they like friendly with each other or will they attack each other? This is what it looks like. <laughs> Holy shit. Looks like they found the tent. That's gotta be at least 30 feet. I feel like that camper got lucky though. Cause he survived. All he did was break his uh, his leg. They said. Hey. That's a camera. Hold on. No Why way. is there static? Didn't they say static means there's a walker nearby? I'm pretty sure I remember that uh, being written somewhere in a brochure. Wait, wait, wait a second. These are the campers. The campsite is about a mile over there, but honestly, I don't feel like going. It's going to be crowded. It's going to be loud. I think we should just go off the trail and find a space for ourselves. Did you not see the PSAs? There weren't that many rules, but one of the rules was don't go off the camping trail. They didn't just say don't do that because it's illegal. They said don't do that because there's walker activity, there's wendigo activity, and there's cave critter activity, and... You will die a horrible, disturbing death. You will literally be ripped to shreds. I'm pretty sure they said that in the PSA, or I might have just made that up myself, but it's literally what will happen. And now you're here, like an idiot, saying, Guys, 
I don't think we should stay safe. I think we should just leave the trail. You don't deserve what happens to you, but I'm just saying it could have been prevented. That's not a half bad idea. I don't know. The rangers were pretty clear that we're not supposed to camp anywhere except the designated spot. Idiots! Come on, man. I, I, I brought the radio. Yeah, man, we can listen Idiot. to some tunes. Besides, it's like a mile away. We can get help. Idiot! <sighs> Dumb. I, I don't really feel like hiking another mile anyway. Stupid. Come on, let's go. Wild. I don't feel like hiking another mile. Do you feel like living? Doesn't seem like it. So we're getting the POV from the campers. I wonder if we're gonna see how uh, the, the the tent gets thrown like across uh, the forest. Yeah, it's not half bad. All right, I'll start setting it up. Y'all realize um, the walker might already be here. You can't see him. But if these are gonna set up a campfire, they said never, never let your campfire go out. <laughs> Was that, is that the tent? You know what, uh, this isn't half bad. I told you. Mm -hmm. Got ourselves a nice little cozy spot for us. Well, we yeah, until the walker like shows up. Yeah, I'm cool with that. That's a radio static. I think we're in the middle of the woods. No, y'all didn't read the brochure at all. I mean, it's, it's getting kind of crowds. I mean, it is an old radio, but where'd you buy that piece of crap? That's the site. That means the walker is nearby. I don't get how the park rangers are so surprised that people are dying. They're letting people like this into the park, knowing that there's critters, monsters, and wendigos. Break it? Yeah, what the heck is wrong with it? That's really loud. Uh-oh. Yo, hell, well, we don't have earthquakes in Washington, do we? Is that a bear? I mean, whatever it is, it's massive. Yeah, just keep watching. <laughs> Dude, the moment I heard, like, a leaf crackling, I'd skedaddle. I'd be gone. You crazy? As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even set foot in the first place. What the hell are you doing? We, we, we gotta go, man. Well, he's gonna check out the sound? I don't, How would you do I don't that? Know. Hey, what do you see? Dallas! 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 Oh, well. And they're still, they're still standing there. Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Oh no, 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 no! Sounds like me whenever Mark. I lose a game. Mark, we gotta go! I, I, I got a gun. We, we, we have to find the ranger! Oh. Alright, got it. What, he's, he's grabbing a gun? See anything? Bro! Huh? I don't see anything! Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? There goes the gun. So I guess you know what happened to the campers. No. So this is the survivor. No, no, no. You know he's gonna hide in the tent, right? Oh, it's not a gun, it's a flare gun! What's that gonna do? Have you been thrown yet?
Oh yeah, look, he's on top of the tree now. Ugh! They really put him in a tree! Bro, that would actually be so scary if this happened to you. So, are they gonna have him sign an NDA too? Because he saw something as well. I feel like all of these tapes are giving me more questions than answers because we still don't know why they're keeping the park open um actually that's the biggest question i feel like if we can get that question answered we'll have answers to pretty much everything why are they keeping this park open there must be a reason why they're not shutting it down like immediately right now this was all in 1975 and 1976 we don't have any footage newer than that so who knows what happened after 1976 what do you guys think let me know down below in the comment section make sure you check out buddy films down below in the description and i'll see y'all next time peace